Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We're so glad you're here. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. All right, it's breakfast time for many, and for many, that means Greek yogurt, at least a few days a week. For Olga, not so much. No, that means a lot for her, <laughs> Greek yogurt. But that could change for me today as I learn why more people are, are going, going Greek. Greek. <laughs> All right, switching gears, we turn our focus to our Behind This Mystery series, and our bodies are in a constant war against infection. But if your child has the rare genetic disease called CGD, they need swift diagnosis and life-saving immune therapies, and we'll learn about one such option. Busy show, The Balancing Act starts right now. As I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm really not a breakfast person. Julie loves her Greek wait, wait, yogurt. Wait, 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 wait. I thought I was doing this segment. I'm the Greek yogurt lover. You're the Greek yogurt queen, but you told me you wanted me to try it and get to, you know. Okay, okay, okay. You already had yours okay. this morning. All right, so. She's not alone. You see, it's at the top of most people's shopping list these days, and with good reason. I've heard it's high in protein, calcium, so time Time for me to become a believer, right? Joining me this morning is registered dietitian and nutrition scientist Marissa McCormick from General Mills Bell Institute of Health and Nutrition. And may I say, happy Dairy Month. Happy Dairy Month. Thanks and for thanks being here. for having me. I'm happy to be here. Did you see how much she loves it? I, I love it too. She so. loved, but she loves it. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to talk to you more about it today. And you're absolutely right, Olga. Dairy is a nutritious food group that's full of many good things our body needs. Unfortunately, only half of Americans are meeting the dietary guidelines recommendation. Only half? For three cups of dairy a day, yes. Wow. And yogurt is a convenient dairy food that provides many essential nutrients like protein, calcium, vitamin D. All right, but now I'm hearing, you know, Greek yogurt, Greek yogurt. What's the difference between Greek yogurt and let's just say the regular yogurt? Yes, so Greek yogurt is very popular right now. And it's because it contains significantly more protein than traditional yogurt. Mm. Almost two times the amount in some cases. Wow, that's really good for us then. Yes, so I have a lot of different Greek yogurt options here. We, have, we have a black cherry flavor. We have our vanilla, a plain, we even have peach and mm. strawberry. So yogurt, it's a great way to start your day. But it also makes for a great snack any time of day. And we actually have some amazing snack ideas to share with you today. So tell me so how, how you eat make your one. Yogurt. Okay, yeah. let's see, this what are you This is one do? of my favorite. It's a berry almond yogurt bowl. Mm. And it starts with our Yoplait Greek 100 black cherry. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop it out into this guy. And, and let's then, be honest, a healthy snack too. It is, there's gonna be some protein in here, uh, calcium, vitamin D. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna help you. What toppings do you want? So let's add some toasted almonds on there. Okay. Yes, I'll you got sprinkle it. sprinkle those guys right I'll on. I'll be the Vanna White. There you go, <laughs> assisting. Yeah, so it's just really easy, convenient. You can do this in the morning before you head out to work. Raspberries? And then fresh, juicy raspberries Ugh. are gonna add some additional nutrients on top of this. And you know what this is really good for? Like, I'll wake up sometimes in the middle of the night, which I know is so bad to do, I know, but I'll get a craving and I just wanna eat some chocolate. This is really a nice alternative. Yeah, I'm glad you asked too, because Yoplait just released a new Greek yogurt product. And this is a Greek yogurt mousse which comes in flavors like <gasps> strawberry cheesecake, vanilla cupcake, which certainly satisfy my sweet tooth. Wow. 100 calories and nine grams of protein in here. And there is so much you can do with yogurt. I mean, the recipes are endless. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You can add fruit, you can add the granola like we showed you today, uh, and you can find more of these great snack ideas on yoplait.com. Julie's always telling me it fills her up and helps her hold out for that next meal. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so foods higher in protein can help you feel full and satisfy hunger. In fact, there's even some research out there that indicates women who eat yogurt tend to have healthier body weights. All right, well, I've got my eye on the black cherry. Yep. Would you mind? Please, I'm take a try. bite. Here's a spoon. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh watch out. I'm sorry, the black cherry is my favorite. That's my favorite, I'm too. Sorry. We'll be friends. I'm sorry, you may pick another one. Okay, mm. well, as she's enjoying mm. the yogurt, you love it? I would feed you this, but yeah. I'm gonna let yeah. you try Isn't another it one. Isn't good? Oh my gosh, thank you for my snack. You're welcome. <laughs> I love her. 
I love her. We, we, we would get along. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna add Greek yogurt to my list because she took it. And if you'd like to find out more about the benefits of yogurt and the best and healthiest ways to enjoy it, just visit us at thebalancingact.com or share with us your own great yogurt recipe ideas. Log on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act Fans. All right, do you have another one for me that maybe I can try? I'm gonna try the vanilla. How about a strawberry cheese? Okay, she wants me to it's try It's not too early for dessert. They're referred to as GMOs or genetically modified organisms and with so much public discussion of GMOs and GMO labeling, we started wondering what really are GMOs and what do they mean for American women. To find out, we turned to our friends at Common Ground, an organization bringing together the women who grow food with those who buy it. And bringing that conversation right to the breakfast table and beyond this morning is Julie Kenny, an Iowa farmer as well as a volunteer for Common Ground. So great to have you in the studio. Thanks for having me. Julie, we hear so much about GMOs and, and a lot of people really don't know what they are. Could you just explain it in kind of layman's term for me and our viewers? Sure, sure. So farmers and gardeners have been improving seeds and plants for centuries and genetic modification or, or GMOs is really kind of the modern version of that where um, we take that process of improving the seeds into the lab and what it results in is, is really a more accurate and precise way of improving those plants. So some of the benefits that we've seen today is, you know, protection against insects or diseases or some of the common challenges that we might have right. on our farm. But I'm really excited about some of the benefits to come, like improved nutrition of the food that we produce, those kind of things, really exciting times. You know, most people don't realize that these products have been on the market for about two decades. Really? And before they even come to the market, they're really, really thoroughly tested and, and researched. And, you know, as a mom who's not only growing these products, but also feeding them to my children, it's really important to me to know that they are the most thorough researched foods on on the market today and have proven to be just as safe as as all the other products available to us what's the most important thing that you want to share with women out there and maybe specifically moms out there yeah I think there are a ton of questions about food and farming and as a farmer I think that's really exciting um, I invite those questions and that's really the main reason that I volunteer my time with common ground I think it's a great opportunity for not just myself but other farm women from across the country to share what's going on on farms today and help answer some of those burning questions and we've got a great website okay that's the viewers I want to know yep, where can they yep. find you find our common and it's a great opportunity to connect with farmers like myself and maybe ask some of those burning questions we haven't talked about today well I just want to thank you and all the farmers and ranchers out there that just provide us with and America has the safest tastiest healthiest food in the world thank you Thank you. <laughs> and if you'd like additional information on GMOs, you're invited for some nutritious nuggets at thebalancingact.com or send us your fresh food ideas, share your thoughts or questions on Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act Fans. Police and fire sirens usually signify an emergency situation. Emergency responders are on the way. And our bodies also have their own emergency responders. They're part of our immune system. Now, there's a very serious and rare condition which can damage our immune system from birth. Here to shed light on this disease is hematologist and children's blood disorder specialist, Dr. Daniel Ambruso, and one of his special patient families, Brad and Jennifer Smith. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Doctor, let me start with you. Since we're talking about an immune system disease. Let's first talk about how our immune system works in our body. Sure, Olga. You can think about the immune system as uh, the function of white blood cells in your body. And you can split it into two main parts. There's the innate immune system. These are the first responders you were talking about. They're like the police or fire. And in fact, these are the neutrophils. So the neutrophils function by going to a site of infection. And when they get there, they try to ingest and kill the bugs. There's another set of white cells, uh, lymphocytes and monocytes, and these are the memory cells. Mm -hmm. These cells will make a copy of the microbe and will help make antibodies and other kinds of cell responses to the infection. So these two parts of the immune system, the innate and adaptive immune system, are important and work together to help us uh, fight infection. Now we want to raise awareness on this rare disease. What is it and what is it called, doctor? Yeah, the rare disease is called chronic granulomatous disease, or CGD. 
This is a disease which occurs in about one in 200,000 live births. Mm -hmm. uh, and the basic defect is in the neutrophils, these first responders. They can get to the site of infection and they can ingest the microbe, but they can't kill it. They can't make these toxic oxygen radicals like hydrogen peroxide. And the net result is an increased risk to serious uh, bacterial or fungal infections. Can it be life-threatening, doctor? Yes, it can be. And in the early days, it was called fatal granulomatous disease uh, because, in fact, uh, many children died at an early age from serious infections. But these days, with uh, new ways of approaching the diagnosis and the management, uh, the, uh, the patients who are affected live much longer. Now, Brad and Jennifer, let me bring you in. Uh, your son, Grady. I know was diagnosed with this rare disease, but let's talk about first what happened. What did you notice? What symptoms were you seeing that you realized, hmm, something may not be right? Well, he was getting a lot of low-grade fevers in a short period of time. It was, I thought it was teething. Normal. Um, but it was over the course of a week or so hmm. that that was happening. And then what got worse? He had lymph nodes underneath the chin here. Got about golf ball size. They operated on him. Um, teams of doctors would come in to try to find out what was going on and then Dr. Ambruso came in and it's like your son has CGD. And when you hear that, first of all, did you know what it was? No. No. And what did you do? I I'm assuming like a parent you'd probably Google what it was. Yeah, we Googled it and it's yeah. terrifying. It says, you know, most children don't make it to the age of 10. <sighs> and I came to him and he's like, stop reading everything Stop you see. Everything. <laughs> you were scared, obviously, yeah. as a yeah. parent. I can't imagine yeah. what was going through your we mind. very scared. You started with fever, golf balls, and now you get this diagnosis. Now, doctor, they got the diagnosis pretty quick as a result of the blood test, which is fabulous. That doesn't happen in most cases, does it? No, it doesn't. And sometimes uh, the diagnosis can be delayed. There's mm. a number of different, as we talked about, a number of different defects in the immune system that can be related to these types of infections. And there is a screening test for uh, CGD. These are called the uh, NBT test or nitro blue tetrazoleum test or the dihydrorhodamine test. And when we looked at the test in, on Grady, we found that his cells did not make any oxygen radicals or any hydrogen peroxide at all. There's a genetic connection to this rare disease and fortunately, thanks to Dr. Ambruso and today's treatment options, there's hope for Grady and his family. So stay right there. Welcome back to The Balancing Act. We're rejoined by Dr. Daniel Ambruso and one of his special patient families, Brad and Jennifer Smith. Doctor, before the break, uh, we were talking about a rare disease and the genetic uh, connection to this disease. Can we talk about that a little bit? Sure. Uh, CGD is a series of genetic diseases. Um, the most common uh, mode of inheritance is uh, sex-linked recessive, and that's where mothers can pass the mutation for chronic granulomatous disease onto their children. It's mm -hmm. usually males that are affected, so mothers are carriers and two-thirds of the patients are actually boys. And with the autosomal types of disease, uh, both boys and girls can be involved. Now we're going to meet Grady and his big sister, Naya, in just a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, what are some of the treatment options today for Grady and other patients that have this rare disease? Yeah, the, the main regimen uh, for these patients is to uh, put them on low-dose antibiotics mm -hmm. to fight off bacterial infections and low-dose antifungals. And then in addition, uh, to treat them three times a week with uh, Actimmune or Interferon Gamma 1B. Actimmune or Interferon Gamma 1B is indicated for reducing the risk of serious infections in patients with chronic granulomatous disease. The, the exact mechanism of action is not, un, not completely understood, but it enhances the function of both the the early responders and also the memory cells. And this helps to enhance the function of the cells and it decreases the uh, numbers and severity of infections that these patients have with bacteria and fungus. And what about side effects with this treatment? Yes, the most common ones are flu-like symptoms. So fever, headache, uh, chills, fatigue, uh, sometimes muscle aches. Uh, and this can be uh, reduced by giving the drug at bedtime and also treating these symptoms uh, with the administration of acetaminophen. It's important uh, to know if you have had allergies either to interferon gamma 1B or uh, E. coli induced products. 
um, and not to use this drug if you have those allergies. In addition, this drug can cause reversible changes in the nervous system and liver function. It can also suppress bone marrow function and decrease uh, the production of white blood cells in the body. These effects are usually reversible when this drug is either discontinued or the dose is decreased. You should talk to your doctor before you start uh, Actimmune if you have had cardiac conditions, uh, if you've had neurologic disorders uh, such as seizures, um, or if you've had reduced bone marrow function. In addition, uh, you should consult your physician if you are pregnant or plan to become pregnant or to nurse. Well, I do want to bring Grady and Naya in. Come in, children. Look how gorgeous these two kids are. This is Grady. Grady, how old are you? Five. Five. And Naya? Six. Six. Mom and Dad, tell me how he's doing. He looks great. He's doing well. He's, he's very healthy right now, and we're following our treatment protocol. Yep. Right? And progressing forward, doctor? Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. No severe infections since the first one. Excellent. I love hearing that. And I love hearing, Brad, how the community came together to help you out. There was so much support for you and your wife during this difficult time. Tell me about that. Some friends set up a fund to help raise some money for us while we were out of work for a little over a month taking care of Grady. You know, it's a great community that we live in. And that's what it's all yeah. about, everybody coming together for a great cause. Yes. Thank you for sharing your story and for creating awareness. I do appreciate it, and God bless both of your children. Thank you. Doctor, thank, thank you for your time and all thank the knowledge you you've brought here today. I do appreciate that as well. And again, if you'd like to log on to compassforpatients.com or actimmune.com or thebalancingact.com for more information on this rare disease. Okay, hope you learned a little something on today's show, and I hope you love your Greek yogurt now. How could I love it if you took it? <laughs> well, the black cherry's mine. Okay. You pick another flavor. I'll try vanilla. <laughs> Remember, we have lots more on our website, thebalancingact.com. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Follow us, like us, tweet us, all that. And until the next time, remember, find your balance. So long, everybody.